Moving on, NASA's Perseverance rover has found evidence of diversity among the organic molecules on Mars. Joining us live now is Fred Watson, Australia's astronomer at large. Fred, great to speak with you. What does this tell us? Is there life out there? <laughs> It just adds another tantalising hint to, to the equation that uh, suggests that maybe uh, at least the, you know, the life forming uh, um, organics, organic chemicals, which are ones that contain carbon, uh, they are present in a proliferation of different uh, materials on the surface of Mars. So this is not... Uh, by any means uh, a, 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 an indication of guaranteed past life on Mars, mm. but it's tantalisingly close to the kinds of co uh, chemicals that we associate with life. The author suggests that the organic molecules found in the formations may have been deposited by water. How yeah. significant is, is that and what's your take on their findings? Sure. And the... the idea that Mars was once warm and wet is, I think, um, universally accepted by all planetary scientists, everybody who's interested in the history of Mars. Uh, it once had a climate similar to ours. There's evidence for that just in the appearance of the planet, because you see features uh, on the Martian surface that we associate with oceans, a uh, very flat ocean bed in the northern hemisphere. There are beaches, uh, there are sea cliffs, uh, all of those things that we associate with water on a world, but there is no liquid water to speak of on the surface of Mars now. It's too cold and the atmosphere mm. is too thin. There's water frozen under the surface, but um, that is perhaps where it all went when Mars cooled down. This is all thought to have happened 2.6 to 3 billion years ago, and it may well be that the chemicals that Perseverance has identified within the last few weeks is actually associated with that period uh, in Mars's ancient history. It's hard to comprehend that amount of time. Look, I want to speak to you about uh, what NASA has released, a dramatic new image to mark the one-year anniversary of the Webb Space Telescope. It really pictures the closest star-forming region to Earth. But, but what exactly are we looking at? Um, a, a myriad of uh, information about the way stars form. It's a region of space. We call it the Rho Ophiuchi dark cloud uh, because that's what it looks like uh, to a, a you know a conventional ground-based telescope. But here we have a space-based telescope capable of uh, discovering exquisite detail in the infrared wave band. And infrared is where we see heat radiation. It reveals images of the stars that are newly formed within that cloud of gas and dust. Uh, some of these stars are probably less than a million years old. That sounds like a long time by human standards, but by star formation standards, it's, it's a blink of an eye. Uh, so it is an astonishing image, uh, which has much to tell us about the way stars themselves form and perhaps how they form the planets around them too. It is an astonishing image. It's quite beautiful. How important has the James Webb Telescope been? quite spectacularly significant, um, if I can mix my <laughs> adjectives there. Look, it, it, it's uh, sin uh, exactly right. It has been working for uh, uh, roughly a year, uh, even within the first uh, you know, the first release of data that took place about a year ago, uh, we saw that this telescope was going to push back the frontiers in a way that you just can't do uh, with a similar sized telescope anyway on the surface of the Earth. It's a six and a half metre diameter telescope that's very big uh, by the standards of space observatories. And that gives it, um, you know, a range that means that it can look at the most distant objects because it's capable of detecting very faint galaxies. So that's one thing that we've seen, some of the earliest galaxies to form in the universe. And yet, on the other hand, we're seeing uh, evidence of chemicals in the atmospheres of planets around nearby stars. Amazing stuff. Absolutely. And the largest visible and infrared light telescope in the world is on target to see first light by 2028, named uh, Extremely Large Telescope. Right. <laughs> um, are you excited? What's that going to be able to show us? Uh, I've been excited about this telescope for the last 25 years uh, when it uh, was first uh, mentioned, actually, as a, pro a possibility. And here we are uh, in 2023 uh, with perhaps five more years of construction. It is an enormous uh, building 
building being built on a place called Serra Amazones uh, in northern Chile. Uh, it has a mirror which will be 39.3 metres in diameter, and that's not a single piece of glass. It's made up of uh, 798 individual segments that will combine to uh, have a reflecting area, as I said, of 39.3 metres across. It is going to be by far the most spectacular ground-based telescope ever built, uh, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to talk to you in, in uh, 2028 to talk about the first results that we see coming from it. Let's